Good evening and welcome to the UNSW Year 12 Information Evening. Before we begin tonight with the presentation, I would like to acknowledge the Bedigal people who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we, which you are joining us from tonight. I would also like to pay my respects to the elders, both past and present and emerging and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who are joining us today. My name is Kiara Ragoni and I'm a Senior Recruitment Product Manager here at the University of New South Wales and I will be your host tonight. Thank you all for joining me online this evening. Tonight in our session, we are going to hear from our UNSW experts from our Gateway program, scholarships, including our co-op program, and accommodation and future student recruitment. They will help you discover your unique journey to university, including pathways to UNSW and how to preference your dream degree. We will conclude with a Q&A session with two of our current students, and that's your chance to ask your questions. You'll get those first-hand insights into life here at UNSW and hear just how great it is to be a UNSW student, both inside and outside the classroom. However, before I introduce you to our guests, I want to introduce you to UNSW. Some of you may already be familiar with us and have attended on-campus events this year. But for those that haven't, we are located in the beautiful city, city of Sydney in Kensington which is just a short light rail trip from, the cent uh, from Central Station. And we have two dedicated stops at our campus for our students. You'll be joining a community of over 60,000 students who study over 300 different types of degrees. And you'll have access to local and international connections that will really help you grow your own networks. In fact, when you hear from our students later tonight, one of them will tell you about his internships experiences with three global companies. We're very proud to be rated in the top 50 universities in the world. And what that means for you is that there's a huge amount of world leading expertise that you can tap into. You'll be exposed to groundbreaking research and ideas and can learn from our academics expertise and experiences. Overall, UNSW is really dedicated to shaping a generation of forward thinking graduates that will all make positive impacts in the world. From our world-class degrees to making new lifelong friends, we can offer you valuable experience in and out of the classroom. And with that said, it's now time to hear from our first, um, sorry, it's time to hear from our team about everything that we offer here at UNSW. I'd like to start with our expert, um, with one of our, sorry, with one of our experts, Bianca Gaspar. Uh, Bianca is our outreach manager from the UNSW Great Gateway Program. Welcome, Bianca. Let's get started. Bianca, to start, can you tell me a little bit about the Gateway Program? Yes, um, so the Gateway Admission Pathway is uh, offers students early entry into UNSW. So the first component that I will uh, mention is that there are two types of early offers in the Gateway Admission Pathway. The first type of offer is an early offer, and that's available in round one only. Round one is open now, and it closes on the 21st of July. That's an offer that's made to you before you sit the HSC. And it has the requirement that you sit the HSC and you get an ATAR. Whereas there is no stipulation as to what ATAR you are to get, it's just any ATAR. So that's the requirement to be able to firm up your early offer. The second type of offer we have is an early conditional offer. That's available in round one and round two. Round two will open on the 2nd of September. So the early conditional offer is an offer that has a, an adjusted ATAR requirement. So that's where you might notice on the UNSW website when you're searching degrees and having a look at your dream degree, you'll see the lowest selection rank required that gives you a little bit of an indication of what it takes to get into the degree. So we look at that and then we significantly reduce the ATAR requirement for the early conditional offer. And that can be up to 10 to 15 points below the lowest selection rank. Thanks, Bianca. Can you tell me who can apply for the program and what's meant by the terminology, the Gateway School? Yes. Um, okay, so there is an eligibility criteria to be able to apply for the Gateway Admission Pathway. 
The first one is you need to be an Australian resident and be completing a year 12 qualification in the year that you apply. So you have to be in year 12 when you apply on an ATAR pathway. You also have to attend a gateway school. Now a gateway school is uh, the schools that we work with in the gateway program. Um, and just to sort of explain, so every school, no matter what the school is and where you're from around Australia, every school has a score that rates how educationally advantaged the school is. So if a school gets a score of 1000 or below across three years, then they're classified as a gateway school. Uh, so that is actually based on government data. It's not a UNSW decision, it's based on government data. So you can jump on our website and check whether you go to a gateway school, you can download the list. Um, but if you don't go to a gateway school, you might be able to um, qualify for the program if you live in a low socioeconomic area and we can check your eligibility for you. Thanks, Bianca. So more on the actual application process, mm -hmm. can you please tell us about the Gateway Application Portal and how that works? Absolutely. Um, so unlike in, in previous years, um, all of our students going through the Gateway Admission Pathway would go through the UAC preferencing process. And I know that everybody is familiar with the UAC preferencing process. Whereas if you are applying for a degree through the Gateway Admission Pathway, we have our very own Gateway Admissions Application Portal. So you don't have to worry about going through UAC. You just jump into the UNSW Gateway Admission Portal and you put in your application. The very first tip I would say is um, attend our Gateway Winter Program from the 19th of June to the 29th of June. Further information coming on that. And in that program, we give you plenty of support around applying for your, um, putting in your application. Perfect. So once, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I was just going to say on that, um, yep. is there a personal statement that's required in that? And, and what, what are some tips for students? Yes, yeah. definitely. Um, so there is a personal statement required. It is a key component of the application. Um, so once you jump in the portal and you put in all of your personal details, you'll have to identify up to two UNSW degrees you'd like to be considered for in order of preference and upload a personal statement. And so the personal statement is really our acknowledgement and recognition that the ATAR is really just one indicator of your capacity to succeed at university. And so what the personal statement does is it really draws out your values, your passions and your learning strengths because we know you're a much more full person other than just your ATAR. And so in the Gateway Winter Program, you can get lots of support writing your personal statement. Perfect. So you mentioned the Gateway Winter Program. Can you tell the audience a little bit more about that? Yes, it's a two week program. It's online after school. So from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, there'll be the sessions will be recorded. If you can't make them, you can pick and choose. You don't have to attend every day. Um, but you can when you register, you'll be able to have a look at a, a bit of an itinerary of what's covered. Um, in, the, in that, we offer HSC masterclasses in biology and legal studies, English and maths, advanced and standard, um, and chemistry as well. So you can really take advantage of those academic enrichment subjects that really give you the best chance at getting the best ATAR possible. Uh, practice papers, you can have HSC papers marked by HSC markers and get some feedback through the program. Find out more about faculties, speak to university ambassadors who recently navigated the HSC process and get plenty of support with your personal statement and the gateway application. Excellent. So lots of different uh, reasons to attend the winter program then. Yeah, a really beneficial program for students. Definitely. Excellent. And if, if you'd like to register, I know they're going to pop the link in the Q&A chat for everyone. Excellent. So that wraps up our formal questions, Bianca. Have you got any final words for the audience about, uh, I guess, the you know main benefits for applying for through the Gateway Admissions Program? Yeah, I think, you know, if, if you, you know, check your eligibility, if you are eligible, you know, apply for the program, put your best foot forward. As I said, the ATAR is just one indicator of your capacity to succeed and be a great learner at, at uh, university. So um, be part of the program, get that support in writing your personal statement so that you are giving yourself the best options um, as you navigate all of your options after high school. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Thank Bianca. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, again, if you do want any more information about the Gateway um, Admissions Program, our team will put the details uh, into the chat function. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next to join me tonight will be Brian, uh, the UNSW Scholarships Manager. Welcome. Great. How are you? How are you this evening? Yeah, good. Good. Feeling happy good. Happy to be here. Yeah, <laughs> Excellent. For, for Great. Invite. All right, let's get started. Um, <clears throat> can you just give us a quick overview about scholarships at UNSW? Sure, of course. So um, you can see on the screen, you can see a bunch of opportunities that are available for scholarships. So we offer millions of dollars per year for a variety of coursework scholarships, which support undergraduate and postgraduate students. And through these scholarships, we recognize achievement, but also provide financial support, promote diversity, and make tertiary education accessible. So all of our scholarships have a minimum of $5,000 per annum, and in most cases are paid as a stipend. So that's a fortnightly uh, payment to the students to help you um, with your everyday costs. Um, in addition to what you can see on the screen there, we've got some accommodation scholarships, sports scholarships, um, scholarships for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. So one of the things we want to do is to make sure that um, a student's circumstances don't prevent them from um, attending university, or at least trying to get to university and, and, and so that it's a, it's a viable option for people. Perfect. Um, and what would you say the main, why would you encourage students to apply for a scholarship with UNSW? Well, I think because there's a large variety of scholarships available um, and that there are some scholarships, although they tend to be a bit niche, some scholarships go without any application. So it's important to check even throughout your degree, um, you can check to see what's on offer because we do support students once they commence their, their study at, uh, at UNSW as well. So it's not just for commencing students. Perfect. So moving on now um, to our merit scholarships, what are some of the key tips you can give our audience tonight? Sure. So make sure you check the eligibility selection criteria because each scholarship will be slightly different. We've done a bit of work to make sure that um, you apply for one umbrella scholarship and get considered for multiple scholarships. Um, but there are some that you might have to apply for additional scholarships. So it's important to know what the requirements are. Uh, provide comprehensive answers with examples and recent examples. Um, so just make sure that it's in the last couple of years. Um, we do have a minimum and a maximum requirement as far as what you can upload. And then pay attention to the word limit and save regularly. And my other advice is to get somebody else to read your personal statements and other criteria, letters of reference, because um, you've sat with this document for a while um, and it might be um, you might not pick up on a, a missing word or what have you. So it's important to have somebody else look at that document too. Perfect. So just to confirm, just one application, which means then you can be considered for multiple scholarships. That's right. And then there are additional, for example, the equity scholarships, which I'll talk about. That's through the university's admission center. So that you might have to do multiple, but we've tried to limit, limit that. Perfect. All right, so then moving on to the equity scholarships. How That's does right. the application work for those? So these are scholarships for students who come from disadvantaged backgrounds. So that could be low SES. You could also be from a, a single parent family. And the advantage to this is um, you don't have to submit an application in some cases. So if you're actually um, from a low SES background, UAC will generate an equity scholarship application for you. Um, you can see some dates there. These are important dates. And the other thing I'll mention is that don't wait until the 23rd of November, for example, to turn in that application because there could be some instances where um, you lose the internet, you get distracted or what have you, and then you won't be considered for the scholarship. So give it some time. One of the important things I want you to take away from tonight is be thinking about scholarships at the same time as you're thinking of admissions. Don't wait until you get that admissions offer before you start looking at scholarships because at that point it's probably going to be too late. You can see some of the disadvantages that we look, at, look for. Um, and then there's some um, documentation that you'll need to supply as part of the process as well. Perfect. So those dates on the screen there, they're hard dates. There's no flexibility around They are. Those. With the equity, though, there'll be another round. So if you don't apply, for example, by the 8th of December, that just means you'll miss out in that first main round, mm -hmm. but you'll be considered in the February-March round. Okay. Um, so so it, it's not drastic, but as you go through the year, there's less and less scholarships available. Perfect. So essentially, uh, once all the scholarships have been taken up, the rounds That's will right. then be closed off. That's right. Okay, excellent. So moving on now to the undergraduate scholarship closing dates, can you just take us through those important dates for the sure. students? Sure. So the direct merit scholarship application, so these are for um, students who are applying based on academic merit, but also could be um, leadership potential, could also be uh, community engagement. Those close on the 29th of September, and that is a hard deadline. Um, there will be no late applications accepted after that date. 
And the reason for that is we like to make those offers at the time that the um, ATARs come out, which is in mid-December. So we need all of that time um, to do all of that assessment. Um, and that's another point. I'll, I'll, I've said it before, but don't wait until the 29th of September to start that application because you'll have to do a personal statement, even letters of reference, possibly, um, perhaps some other documentation. So start that early. Um, the educational access scheme, which is important to note, is through University's Admission Center. Um, that's the 23rd of November for the main round. Sports scholarships, the 30th of November. Equity scholarships, 8th of December. And then we also have, I mentioned earlier, the Indigenous Merit Scholarships. Those close in the middle of December. So some are via the UAC um, website That's and some right. are via the UNSW right. website. Perfect. Um, our team might put those uh, links to the UNSW scholarship website in the yeah. chat for us. Perfect. All right. So sorry, just we skipped <laughs> one, two, three. Um, right. So if our students want to find out more information about the UNSW scholarships, yep. uh, how is the best way to get in contact with the team? Sure. It's very easy. So scholarships at unsw.edu.au is our website. Mm -hmm. And on that page is a, a selection tool. So you can put in criteria that apply directly to you and it'll filter out the scholarships that are most relevant. Mm -hmm. um, and then likewise, it's just scholarships at unsw.edu.au is our general email address. Um, where you can then just send um, queries um, and feel free to do that. We we will get back to you in three days. Um, no questions are silly. We understand that it's an important time and a lot of you haven't been through this before. A lot of you don't have anybody in your family who've been through, through this before. So we're always open to taking questions. Perfect. Nice. That's very, very helpful information. Now, before I let you go, any final tips for, get, for those applications? What's, I guess, your number one tip for a student that's starting to apply? I guess I'd say apply for more than one scholarship. A lot of people think that they can only apply for one scholarship. Uh, in some instances, you can only receive one scholarship, but if you think that there's more than one scholarship that applies for you, apply for multiple. Um, that way, um, the best conversation we have with people is where they have to choose a scholarship uh, because they've applied for more than one and they've been offered more than one. So apply for everything that you think you're eligible for because there's no, no fee to do that. Perfect. Thank you so much, Brian. Okay. Uh, that's everything on tonight from our scholarships team. Again, our team will probably put the details in the chat there. Um, but if you're not sure, just Google UNSW scholarships and that will take you to our website. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thanks. And next, I'd like to invite one of our actual UNSW scholars to the stage with me. Uh, and this is Christian. Mm -hmm. Hi, Christian. Christian is um, one of our co-op scholarship uh, scholars, sorry, and he's going to take you through this evening about the co-op scholarship program. Thanks, Christian. We'll get started. Uh, first off, a um, little bit of introduction to yourself for the audience. Sure. Um, hey, everyone. So my name is Christian. I'm in my fourth and final year of my Bachelor of Commerce uh, co-op program, majoring in marketing. So I'm a marketing co-op scholar. Perfect. Can you tell us what is a co-op? What is the co-op program at UNSW? Great. So there's five main things that we sort of pride ourselves on and five core offerings for we, which we provide to students. So these are industry experience, leadership training, professional development, financial support, and networking slash uh, mentoring. So the first one is probably the biggest reason why you would sort of sign up for this career development program, the industry experience. So you get up to free placements at industry leading companies during your time at working uh, starting at UNSW. So these placements can range from your big investment banks, such as your JP Morgan, Citibanks, to your tech unicorns, such as your Atlassians, and everything in between, such as your RBAs or McDonald's or Coca-Colas. And these are really good work experience that you can get while studying. And on top of this, you get leadership training. So we have our own annual leadership camp, which you get to go in as a first year. And on top of this, you also have a lot of professional development opportunities, both within your placements, but also outside and run by the core program themselves. And for Fleet, it is a significant financial support. We get up to $21,600 every single year, and this is untaxed. And this money can be spent on anything. So this could be paid towards your hex. Or personally, at least for me, I've been able to take this money and travel overseas for exchange or representing university in case competitions. And lastly, the part that resonates with me the most is the mentoring session, uh, the networking, where you become part of this cohort of some of the most smart, funny, and just down-to-earth people that you would ever meet in your time at university. And all of my closest friends today have come from the co-op. Nice. It sounds very beneficial. Um, so... As a, if we've got our future scholarship um, co-op, sorry, scholars in, in the audience, um, what tips can you give them when they're applying? 
Yeah, so at the core of it, we look for three things. Um, passion for discipline screen, we're looking for all-rounders, and ultimately meet the eligibility criteria. So mm -hmm. I'm maybe happy to talk through each of these. Yeah, that particular. would be great. Thank you. Yeah, so maybe signing off for the first one, so passion for the discipline stream. Mm -hmm. So we offer our co-ops in a range of areas. Um, you can probably get there it go. Up. Sorry, a bit yeah. slow. <laughs> That's right. So we offer in three key areas, business, engineering, and science. And as you can see up on the slide, is the full list of the scholarships that we currently are offering. A few things to note here that unfortunately we don't offer any co-ops for medicine or law. And another small thing to note is that when you apply for a co-op program, you're applying for a single degree. So you can't come in as a double degree but double degrees are accepted on a case-by-case -case basis after your first placement. So at the core of it, if you're passionate about any of these areas, um, at least this is one criteria that we really look for. Perfect. So moving on, um, what, what do you mean by the terminology an all-rounder? What, what, what are we looking for in an all-rounder? Yeah, I think there's a common misconception that all COP students are academically extremely smart and that's all they are, which can be further than, than from the truth. At the core of it, we're looking for all-rounders. So what this means is that students who go beyond just their academic success, but also look to get involved in terms of their extracurriculars. And this can be anything from a part-time job, public speaking, uh, sports volunteering, or anything that you're honestly passionate about. So the type of people that you actually see being COP scholars, these are ambitious, motivated, passionate people, and have carved their own story when sort of coming into the COP program, and honestly just pursue what they enjoy and take it to the highest level. Nice. So if we're moving on to the eligibility criteria, can you give our audience some of the application tips? So I guess the process that you went through a few years ago when you made your application. Yeah, it was four years ago, so a bit of a while now, but <laughs> I think these application tips hold true regardless of what you're applying for, sure. but especially for the core program. First one is be authentic, be yourself. I think you see this, sort of hear this term around a lot, where it's just be yourself, but it couldn't mean be further from the truth, at least for the co-op. I think there's a common misconception that I've seen where some students um, take on extra clues just for the sake of taking them on. But when you actually talk to these experiences in your application, in the interview, you don't come off as passionate. So my recommendation is really just take what you enjoy and pursue it, take it, extend it, and see how far you can take that thing. And that's what you actually talk about. Another tip is structure your responses. So I'm sure you can find resources online, but try to structure your responses in a way that makes sense and communicates your ideas the best. So a common one we recommend is the STAR method. And last tip is just like Brian mentioned before, but proofread. Uh, give your application to your friends and family, read it out loud, and really look for the spelling, grammar mistakes, and try not to edit on the very last day. Perfect. So I guess be your authentic self mm, is, sure. is really um, one of the things that shines through. Um, before I let you go, um, would you mind telling the audience a little bit, a bit about your personal experiences and I guess the internships? You've worked with some mm. amazing global companies. Yeah, so yeah. I've been really lucky to work at three amazing companies. So in my second year of university, I got to work in marketing at McDonald's. So I got to work on some campaigns such as the 30 Days 30 Deals, Macca's Monopoly. I even got to launch McDonald's Fried Chicken in South Australia. And in my third year, so at least for marketing co-ops, the third year is full of work. So two six-month placements. Where starting off, I was at Colgate Palmolive, where I got to launch our own uh, new toothpaste brand called Hello. Hello. And then, hello. <laughs> and then um, in the second latter half of my third year, I was working in the experiences team at American Express. I was lucky enough to go to concerts such as Dua Lipa, Billie Eilish, Child of the Crater, and One Republic. Wow, and this is all part of your studying. <laughs> my studying, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So when can we expect to see Hello Toothpaste on the shelves? I think you should be able to find it at select retailers now. So when, uh, one really cool thing about when I was actually working there, we actually launched near the start of my internship. So then when I was actually walking through like Coles and Woolworths, I actually just got to see my own product on the shelves. And I got to um, sort of give some to my friends and family and ask for their feedback, which was really exciting. Oh, nice. So tonight when you're all brushing your teeth, <laughs> think about Christian and the new UNSW scholarship program. Exactly. That'd be great. Um, any final words for our audience before I let you go this evening? Yeah, um, one thing is apply. I think the biggest mistake that people make is they maybe start an application or rule themselves out before the application even starts. But the main thing, just apply um, and for the, a couple of hours of work for the opportunity that is such as life-changing as this, I'd say it's worth any time. Perfect. Thank you so much, no Christian. Worries. Thanks for joining us. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Mm -hmm. um, and as Christian said, we really strongly, sorry, really encourage you to make your application. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
So next to join me tonight is Michael Potoka. Um, he's the Dean of Colombo House, which is one of our accommodation residents here on campus at UNSW. Welcome, Michael. Hi, Carol. Lovely to be here. Thank you. How are you tonight? Uh, I'm really excited to be here and I'm delighted to be presenting about accommodation. Perfect. All right, let's get started. Um, can you just give us a quick overview about UNSW accommodation? Absolutely. So UNSW accommodation is a great place to be if you're looking for a safe, secure option right on the campus. Uh, it's a fantastic option for you. Um, UNSW accommodation itself, UNSW owns and operates seven colleges and uh, five different types of apartments. Um, and that houses about 2,250 students. And on top of that, we have affiliated colleges and apartments. Um, so in total, about 4,000 students call UNSW home. Perfect. And I believe you call UNSW home as well. What's your role here on campus? Absolutely. So um, I'm a dean of one of the residential colleges owned by UNSW. Um, I'm from Colombo House um, and I live here. I've been living here for nine years with my family. Um, it's, it's a real pleasure and delight to be able to live on campus and enjoy the community. Um, and I live here with 242 other students. Um, and enjoy every day. Oh, that's nice. I'm not sure if that sounds like a nightmare or not. But <laughs> um, So moving on, what are the different types of accommodation that UNSW offers? Yes, yeah, one of the really unique things about UNSW and its accommodation, we actually offer quite a wide variety, um, broadly um, broken into two different types. So within the colleges space, um, we have, as I said, a, quite a number of our own UNSW colleges um, and affiliated and Colleges offer um, catered experiences mostly um, and a full experience. So if you um, like to get involved in a whole lot of social, sporting, um, academic um, uh, and all lots of other cultural activities, then colleges is certainly a great place to be. Um, if you got in involved in lots of things in high school, then I'd suggest that colleges might be a good place for you. In the apartment side, um, we offer um, a lot more independence. So if you're looking to um, cook for yourself, be independent, um, try and organise your own social activities and uh, sample lots of um, different things on campus with clubs and societies, then apartments might be for you. So on the apartment side, everything from studio apartments where you're not sharing with anybody else, it's fully self-contained, all the way up to eight bedroom apartments where you're sharing kitchen and common facilities. Perfect. And what's the accommodation community like? Is there a mix of international and Australian students? How do you get that balance? Yeah, it's really interesting and it's it's a very diverse community. It does depend a little bit on if you're living in uh, at colleges or the apartments and the specific place that you're choosing to stay in. So if you like the idea of living in an international community, you certainly should be targeting those types of buildings and staying there. Um, Colombo House, where I'm from, um, has over 38 nationalities living here every year. Um, but on campus, there's over 60 nationalities living on campus in total. Nice. So very multicultural Extremely, community. Yeah. Perfect. So if we've got someone that's considering living on campus for their first year, what advice would you give them? So I think um, I would break that down into two things mainly. The first thing I would ask people to do is really have a think about the type of experience they'd like to have um, and, and really understand the application process that goes along with that. Um, on the college side, for example, it's a very detailed application process and all the deans uh, review the applications and then invite people for an interview and only after successful interview do we offer places. Um, on the uh, apartment side, it's really first in best dressed. So um, the second piece of advice is apply early. Um, people think that you must have an offer and people wait. But in reality, we don't need you to have an offer for a UNSW. If you think that you're coming to UNSW, you should be applying and uh, hopefully applying for what you want. And on that application note, when do 2024 applications open and close? Yes, yeah, so UNSW accommodation expects to open mid-October mm -hmm. um, and that's a rolling application and we'll continue to have that open all the way throughout the year. We do have people coming and going throughout the year, so it is continuing to be open. Um, but early applications, early October, um, and going forward from there. Nice. And lastly, what do you look for in an application when you're reviewing them? Uh, certainly in the college space, what we're looking for are students who can get involved um, and are going to be at home in the college space. They are um, really very lively in social spaces, and so we want people to be successful and happy in those spaces. So we are trying to 
make sure that students want to get involved, want to give back to the college, uh, looking for leadership opportunities. Um, as I mentioned, lots of different ways to get involved, whether that be through sporting, musical, cultural, academic, um, et cetera. So. Perfect. And one question that we get a lot um, from future students is around, you know, I'm starting university, I don't know anybody, is, is this a great way, I guess, to find instant community and friends? What would you say about that? It's the best way. <laughs> um, yeah, I, certainly in both apartments and colleges, um, you will meet people um, from day one. And um, alongside the university's experiences, we have a lot of programs and activities that we offer just for, just for students living in both colleges and the apartments. So you'll make friends instantly. Awesome. That's a nice way to finish. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Michael. Um, I think that was a really good overview for what it's like to live here at UNSW. Um, and as you can see, it's a really nice, vibrant community and a safe place to be. Now we're going to move on to um, some tips for choosing your dream degree here at UNSW. And I'd like to invite my colleague, Grace, to the stage. Thank you so much, Grace. Thanks for having me, Kiara. Perfect. Hello to everyone online. Let's get started. Okay, so firstly, we get a lot of questions from students around how do they choose their dream degree and how do they navigate it? Can you give us some tips? I absolutely can. And I probably just wanted to start off if you're here with me in person, I'd ask you to raise your hand, but it would be good to get a feel, send an emoji, do what you have to do, but who knows what they're studying right now? And Ooh. who doesn't know? Ooh, can see a lot of yeses, noes popping up on the screen, not sure. <laughs> well, guess what? It doesn't really matter where you are on the stage because it's okay not to know, and we're here to reassure you of that. I think throughout the next few slides, you'll know you have so many options. Um, to explore and set your path for the year ahead. But um, here's a few things that you can do. So really it's about exploring all your options. So think about what you enjoy, think about the subjects you enjoy during your high school years, what you're studying now, and then you can pretty much align that with something that has a career attached to it. Um, I would really recommend going onto our website and just having a little look at all the different um, degrees, go through the UG guide if you have one, um, next up is at UNSW, we have single and we have double degrees. I'll go into what makes a double degree so special in a little bit, but this might be something you need to have a think about because you might have multiple passions and that might be your issue, is that you're maybe too good at everything. You're, um, you're just not really sure how to narrow it down. And so a double degree could be a good fit for you. Um, the third thing we want to stress to you is know your adjustment factors. So. This is where um, we look at your ATAR and um, adjustment factors and combine that to form the lowest selection rank. And this will give you um, a really clear or a better indication of where you are um, in terms of the entry requirements for a specific degree at UNSW. And lastly, uh, I would say most importantly, is come hang with us at Open Day. Absolutely. So open Day is on September 2nd. It's um, if you're an employee at UNSW, it's probably your favourite day of the year. Saturday. Um, also for the students and our future students. So please come along. We'll have academics there. We'll have um, students there. It's where you can deep dive, answer all your questions. Come if you're scared. Come if you're not scared. Uh, we'll be here to support you along the way and we really can't wait to meet you. Excellent. So now moving on, we get a lot of questions about portfolio entry and early conditional um, offers. Does UNSWA offer portfolio entry or any early conditional offer schemes for their degrees? Yeah, so I guess I'd start by saying a portfolio isn't essential to getting an offer at UNSW. None of our um, degrees for undergraduate require a portfolio. So rest assured if if portfolio sounds like a drag for you, it's not It's not a requirement, so I'm not here to tell you about it. But, however, we do have some exciting news. So this year, um, so for people going into term one of 2024, so new students, we have our portfolio entry early conditional offer scheme. So this is the first time we're doing, I guess, early conditional offers attached to a portfolio entry. So I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Um, but really, this this scheme is just about recognizing your creativity, your critical thinking, thinking skills, or even just your potential to succeed in your chosen degree. So eligible programs for this scheme are um, in the arts, design and architecture faculty. So think about your Bachelor of Arts, your Bachelor of Media, Bachelor of Design, Fine Arts, those sort of degrees. 
um, and then also our Faculty of Engineering Admissions Scheme. So if you want to see the full extensive list of what degrees come into this portfolio entry um, scheme, you can just look on the website down there. Um, I should probably tell you, I guess, about some key dates. So this scheme is open now. I would say get in early, start your um, portfolio, submit it and then forget about it because this can really only help boost your, um, I guess, admissions. You'll see there that it's um, expecting an ATAR within 10 points of that selection rate. So pretty significant in terms of I guess, support and, and boosting your, your ATAR to receive an offer at UNSW. But that first round of applications does close on Friday the 21st of July. Perfect. Now you mentioned that students can jump online and find out more information, but are we running any workshops or anything that they can get get more info from? I love it. Lead it lead with the punchline. <laughs> but um yes, so um I we did run an in-person event on Tuesday and I was so happy to tell everyone about our portfolio entry early and conditional offer scheme workshops. So in the school holidays, July um 12th and 13th, we'll be having um, portfolio entry workshops. We'll be having one in person for arts, design and architecture at our wonderful art and design campus in Paddington. So if you're interested in, in those sort of degrees, please come along in person. You can even bring examples of what you're thinking about submitting and we'll have some academics there to chat you through, give you some tips. And then we'll also have an online session. So fear not if coming to campus is not for you um, right now, but we will have the online session on the 13th. And again, we'll have breakout room so you can have chats to academics and, and you can really get those tips, submit your questions and have, have all your concerns or queries answered. So really exciting. We hope to see you there. Um, hopefully the team will pop the link in the chat. Um, but yeah, we look forward to seeing you there and I hope you submit a portfolio entry. Awesome. So lots of opportunities for our audience to find out more about the Portfolio Entry Early Conditional Offer Scheme here at UNSW. All right, moving on. What about those double degrees? You mentioned them earlier. Can you give um, our audience a little bit more what it means to do a double degree? Does it mean more study? Does it mean double amount of time? What does it mean? It definitely doesn't mean double study or double the amount of time. Um, I think this is the beauty of double degrees is that you're ending your, I guess, undergraduate degree with two bachelors. So you could be someone who is really passionate about areas. So maybe you're looking at a Bachelor of Advanced Science because you love biology. And then you're also really passionate about music. Well, guess what? There's a degree for that. You can do the Bachelor of Advanced Science and Bachelor of Fine Arts. You can also um, consider a double degree if you're looking at your career opportunities. So. Um, we have a wonderful student here, Naranika, and I was just speaking to her before about her double degree. So she is doing a Bachelor of Arts combined with a Bachelor of Laws. Her major in Arts is Political and International Relations. Um, and I asked her, why is that helping complement your law degree? Because her end game is becoming a lawyer. And she said, look, I understand the political field. I understand the implications in in wider context now. So I think that's something just really amazing. And, and once you come to Open Day, we have a chat to even more students about um, double degrees. And then uh, lastly, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to clarify that double time, yeah, double study. Always a question. Um, so you're not doing double the work. So the friend who's doing fine arts and the friend who's doing Bachelor of Science, you're not doing more um, classes than them each semester. Mm -hmm. What we do is we design the degree so that we know you've got your two chosen fields so that you, that's really what you pursue. Um, those are your two interest areas, which means you can, I guess, study the same amount of time and just come out with um, two degrees in, say, four to six years, roughly. Perfect. Actually, after Grace has finished tonight, we've got two students joining us who are both doing double degrees. So I'm sure they can give you their personal insights to what a typical day looks like Amazing. for them on campus. So moving on, um, adjustment factors is another term that our future students hear all the time and it can be really, really confusing. Can you just explain what, that, what an adjustment factor is and what it means? Yeah, so basically adjustment factors are additional points to your ATAR um, and we have a few different options that you can, I guess, explore your adjustment factors and when we say know your adjustment factors, we mean 
you can always work out what what is the maximum amount you can get, um, especially in HSC Plus. So that is on there. If you Google HSC Plus, um, you can go on there and explore all the different subjects. And if you perform well in those subjects, so whether you're looking at a band six or a band five, and they're relevant to the, your chosen degree, you might have potential to get some adjustment factors, which is amazing. You don't have to do anything. It automatically happens for you. Um, Additionally, we have our Elite Athlete and Performers and Leader Scheme. So this is one where you will have to apply and I really do encourage you to go and have a little look, have a little Google um, and really explore your options there because if that's something that maybe sounds like you, it's pretty self-explanatory in the title. So definitely have a look. And then, of course, the edu Educational Access Scheme that is um, through UAC. And so just to wrap up, um, how many adjustment factors you could get. So you can get a maximum of 12 points counted towards your 2024 um, admission, but that is across all the different schemes. So not 12 each scheme, but that's a combination of 12 points. So if you're looking at an ATAR of 80, you could land at 92 if you get the full amount of adjustment factors. Pretty significant, I would say. Yeah, so those adjustment factors can be essentially the link between you getting into your dream degree, degree or not. So Definitely. certainly get in there um, and find out more information about those. And again, our team can put some information in the chat for you. So next up, what about applying? Um, are there any prerequisites for UNSW? Oh, look, I'll be short on this one, I promise. <laughs> but no, we don't yeah. have prerequisites. So we have assumed knowledge, which basically means when you see assumed knowledge, it's the level of standard that we expect from our students in day one in class. So if you're thinking, oh, the course I'm interested in has mathematics advanced, I'm, I'm not doing that. It's okay, you're not going to be blocked from an offer, so that is the best thing. However, um, you might want to consider doing a bridging course or, or doing some additional tutoring just to feel confident enough that you're going to be up to, I guess, the standard of, of what, what will likely be in your course content. But fear not, you won't be blocked from an offer and there's so many um, options at university once you get here to help support you through your studies. And if you're not sure about the bridging course, again, just jump online, uh, Google UNSW Bridging Programs. There's a handy flow chart on there that you can have a look at, which will take you through the steps. So it'll say, I'm currently studying this level of mathematics and I'm not sure if I need to go and find out a little bit more before I study, for example, my engineering program. And it'll take you through the steps and help you decide whether you need to um, access our bridging programs or not. Um, and if you do, you can follow the steps on how you can apply for those, how long they take the fees and how many times they're offered each year. All right, so what I'm going to do next, um, Grace, is I'd like to tell you a little bit about how we get an offer to UNSW. Um, and then after that, how do we preference it? So I'm going to give you the clicker because it's probably easier if you navigate yourself through this one because it's it's Alrighty. tricky, but this should make it easier for our audience. I feel like this one's a little bit of a performance, so yes. bear, bear with me. <laughs> but um, getting an offer to UNSW. So basically, blanket rule, what we're looking at right now, um, if you're just coming in purely on your, I guess, your performance in the HSC, is the selection rank. So that is your raw ATAR plus any adjustment factors you may be eligible for. So when you're looking at that lowest selection rank, this is what we mean. We're considering someone's raw ATAR and then their adjustment factors. Cool. So I'm going to take you through an example. Um, let's, let's pretend we're this person. So this person has an ATAR, so that's a raw ATAR of 84. They've received adjustment factors of 11. Go them. They knew their schemes. They, they got in. They did well. Um, so their lowest selection rank was 95. The course that they're most interested in is the Bachelor of Engineering Honours combined with Commerce. That's their dream degree. But they were a little bit iffy. They weren't sure if they were going to get those adjustment factors or maybe they didn't realise. <laughs> but so they preferenced um, another degree. We're calling it Degree A. That's the first one. It's a safeguard. 80. That's what... The score, I mean, similar to the score they got, but yeah, they've really put that as a safeguard. It's still something they like, but not necessarily their, their number one choice, which is obviously here at UNSW. Then there's degree B. They've done that. They've gone, oh, maybe I'll, I'll get a little bit more. They put this degree B as 85. And then they preference their dream degree, the one they want the most. They've put it third. Unfortunately, what this means is because they were competitive for degree A, they're getting an offer to degree A because that's the way UAC works. They'll give you an offer to your first preference because it literally is taken as your first preference or degree of choice. 
So this person was competitive for all of their offers, um, but they will only receive an offer to degree A. Sad, because <laughs> Bachelor of Engineering and Commerce has not been um, put as an offer for this round. Don't worry, they could do reapply in the second round and change their preferences. So we're going to show you how to do that. So this is the same student, but they've gone and they fix their preferences before the deadline and they've put in their Bachelor of Engineering Commerce degree as number one. Again, the competitive for all their um, offers or all their degrees, sorry, because their selection rank was that 95. But the most amazing thing now is that that student is getting an offer to UNSW's Bachelor of Engineering Commerce and that is the way you preference. If you have more questions about preferencing, please pop it in the chat or speak to our future student inquiries team. We're always here to help, but I really hope that's provided a little bit more clarity around preferencing and what you need to do. So, oh, I forgot to... It. That's but, um, right. <laughs> just to recap the preferencing tips so it really is that wish list um i like to say whatever you want for christmas put that first it's that's a nice that's, way to look at it that's the number one thing um and yeah don't count yourself out that's probably my second favorite one because it doesn't matter you can put one to five and it will just go down the list so treat it that way and and don't count yourself out back yourself Perfect. So in a nutshell, um, dreams for them to come true, number one, and then go down the list. Yes, Perfect. I love it. Excellent. Thank you so much, Grace. That was extremely helpful. Um, if you've got any questions about that audience, just make sure you pop it in the chat. Um, our team can help you. Um, you will also be able to access a recording of this um, uh, on Monday. I think that's going to be sent to you um, and you'll be able to watch Grace again take you through those steps. Love Thanks you. so much, Grace. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our UNSW expert panel. Um, so right now I'm going to introduce some superstars to the stage with me. We've got two current students. I've got Arnav and Lizzie. Welcome to the stage. Okay, so let's get started. Lizzie, can you please introduce yourself to our audience? Of course. So my name is Lizzie. I'm currently in my fifth and final year and I'm studying a Bachelor of Science majoring in Biotechnology combined with a Bachelor of Law. Perfect. And Anna? So I'm in my second year. I'm studying a double degree actuarial studies and a Bachelor of Commerce majoring in finance. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. So let's get started. We've got a few questions coming through um, around transitioning from school to uni. Any tips, Lizzie? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. I think um, be an, uh, uh, have an open mind and be open to different experiences. That's definitely my top tip. Um, I know that the jump from school to uni can be a little bit daunting, mm -hmm. um, but I think if you have a positive attitude um, and you, you know, you're open to different experiences, you're willing to make new friends, you're willing to say hi to the person you're sitting next to in a lecture, um, then it definitely makes your uni experience a lot more, I guess, fun and a lot more interesting. So that would be my top tip for the transition. Perfect. What about you, Anav? Anything different? Just to add on to that, UNSW has so many opportunities with peer mentoring programs. Because you're not the only one going through this transition, there's so many others to go through it with you. And if you just sign up for some of these peer mentoring programs, there's older students that have just done this recently to guide you through the process. Thank you. So that daunting feeling that you might have on your first day of uni will quickly disappear when you meet friendly faces. Um, next one. Um, this is always a question we get, but why did you choose UNSW? That's such a great question. And I have many reasons. I think, firstly, I guess on the academic side, I was really interested in pursuing the degree that I am doing, so a Bachelor of Science and a Bachelor of Law. So I really wanted to choose an institution that could provide a lot of um, great support for the degrees that I was interested in. So UNSW has a really amazing science program um, with lots of um, researchers that are um, well known in their field and have conducted some interesting research. So I wanted to come into an institution that could support me um, in the science aspect. And also in the law aspect, UNSW is ranked first for our undergraduate law degree. So I was definitely looking at where I would get a good, I guess, academic experience, but also student experience. I jumped onto campus for open day and I could definitely feel the good vibes in the air. Um, I knew that it was a place that I was able to feel comfortable in and feel really supported um, in the environment. So definitely looking at the other social aspects of uni as well. I know we have over 300 clubs, so I was excited to get 
um, involved in the clubs and societies. Um, so that also really sold me on UNSW. Yeah. Perfect. What about you, Anav? What made you choose UNSW as your future student destination? So throughout high school, there were a lot of options. So it definitely was hard to narrow it down. But as soon as I jumped onto UNSW campus for O Week, I think those options became so narrow because just seeing the beautiful campus of UNSW, there isn't much of a choice left. From the buildings to the landscapes and the sporting facilities at uni, I didn't really have much of a decision, decision left to make. Also, similar to Lizzie, I was really focused on studying actuarial studies. And the UNSW Business School, especially for actuarial studies, it's one of the best options you can have for someone in Australia, even the Southern Hemisphere. So just looking at my options, weighing in on the academic side, as well as you know, the campus life and the vibes there, they both came together really nicely and concluded with UNSW as my decision. Perfect. While we're on that campus life side, um, outside of the classroom, what are your favourite things to do here on campus at UNSW? What extra things can students get involved in? Do you want to take that? Oh, yeah. Both you. I'm sure you're different. <laughs> so I got involved in a couple of societies in my time at UNSW. So both faculty-based societies as well as more hobby and interest-based societies. Um, I've been part of the Law Society for the past, I guess, four to five years now. Um, and it, al it allowed me to um, do things that are outside of academic studying, but it actually helped me build my legal skills and my confidence. So um, being able to participate in things such as negotiation competitions, mooting competitions, and like client interviewing competitions, they were able to help me feel confident um, and also build skills that would help me become a bit more employable. Um, but I was also involved in more hobby and interest-based societies. So I was in Food Lovers in my first year and we got to hang out at different um, food places around not just the campus but around um, the city and just Sydney in general. And that was a great experience to meet new people and to engage in our fun hobby of eating yummy food. <laughs> yeah, so that's been some of my highlights in terms of involvement outside of just academic studying. Nice. And what about you, you Anav? Once you've left the lecture theatre, what do you like doing? So... As I've said earlier, with these sporting facilities, we've recently opened a new football ground and that ground has really nice grass, a nice football field. You know, I love hopping on there with some of my friends with a football. And you know, often there'll be times we forgot to bring the ball. There's even areas where you can borrow some equipment. So that's never a worry. You can jump on, you can you know, ask them for a football, for a frisbee, whatever interest you have. And you know, like similar to Lizzie, I was involved in society life for the past year and a half now. So last year I was part of the Business Society. That gave me a really good first year experience. Absolutely no regrets there. So that gave me experiences ranging from, you know, the academic side upskilling to the social side where I just got to meet so many people, like-minded people, as well as people, you know, just to give me a different perspective on this university life as a whole. Perfect. I think even if you've got no plans on the day, there is always a buzz on campus. Just a couple of weeks ago, I walked outside the office into the quad and there were two alpacas um, in the grass in the middle and it was wellness week. Um, and the alpacas were there just making everybody feel calm and serene. Um, and it certainly even helped me as, as an employee here at UNSW just to relax a little bit. So there's always something going on on campus. Now, both of you study double degrees. Um, can you tell me what that's like? And then I guess we've got students asking about what's the difference between a double and a single and what should I do? But I'm sure you've got friends that do singles, so you can give that little bit of um, advice on the double versus a single. Lizzie, yeah. did you want to start? Sure. So my double degree is in two completely different fields. So everyone always asks me, like, what were you thinking? This is <laughs> so strange. Um, but for me, it was really about following both of my interests. And even though they're in different areas, so science and law, um, I think that when I was starting my university journey and I was in year 12, so in similar positions to you guys out there watching, um, I was really thinking about what did I you know, feel interested in and want to pursue in the future. So for me, I really enjoyed my time in the science labs. I did chemistry and biology and I loved finding answers to things, being able to experiment and actually know that in the end there's an answer or there's a reason behind something. Um, and with the law side of things, um, part of my extracurricular that I was doing throughout high school was debating and public speaking. So being able to learn how to argue and to advocate and to be persuasive um, that also was an area that really interests me. But I wasn't necessarily thinking about like what future job do I want to have because, you know, the things fall into place as you go throughout uni. And for me, I'd love to be able to combine both the science aspect and the law aspect, potentially going into intellectual property law or patents and helping with um, new scientific innovations and trying to get those ideas into the market. So definitely... Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, it's been a good experience. Nice. And what about you, Anna? What was your um, reasoning behind doing the double degree? Yeah. So a little bit on the contrary here. With my double degree with actuarial studies and commerce, there is a very clear link. And because of that, just speaking a little bit into a day in the life of a student studying this double degree, with the ones that have so much in common, they really don't extend your degree by very much at all. So it's not the case where you have, you know, double the degrees, double the amount of time. And actuarial studies alone would take me three years, similar with a Bachelor of Commerce. And together, they're only four years. So in only an extra years of work, I'm walking out with twice as much education. And just thinking about it like that, you really start to see how it's an opportunity where it's really worth the time you're putting in. Mm. And also going out of high school, I was really looking for that challenge. Just thinking about, you know, this double degree, I'll get a broader field of perspective with where I want to go to my career later on. It opens up more opportunities, of course, and just provides that extra challenge for you. Perfect. And on that, we've got a few students who are asking uh, if they decide to start with a double degree, can they switch? Um, absolutely. Um, don't feel like once you've made that decision and you've got your UAC preferences and you've got your offer that, oh, I'm stuck in this now. If you come to UNSW and you start in that double degree and you think, actually, I'd probably prefer to just do the single, then we can help you out with that. Um, similarly, if you start in a single degree and you think, actually, maybe I would like to do this a double degree um, and we can certainly talk to you about your options there. So it is easy to switch um, and change around once you're in. So don't feel like um, that that final preference decision is stuck with you then for the next three to four years. Yeah, yeah certainly. Sure. Um, Lizzie, this is a specific one for you because we get a lot of questions about the UNSW LAT test. Can you please take us through what that entails and I guess your experience? Yeah, absolutely. So the LAT test or the law admissions test is an exam that we use to assess um, your application into UNSW specifically for the law program. So what it is is that you have to sit a two hour essay based exam and you can sit that one in year 11 or year 12 and we use that to assess your LAT mark as, long, as well as your ATAR mark. So that actually is assessed on a sliding scale so you can perform to your best in both and that'll help boost your chances of getting into um, the UNSW law program. So this year the LAT is in September, well every year it's in September um, and the registrations are still open at the moment so I'd highly encourage you to uh, make sure you're registered for it if you are interested in studying a law degree at UNSW because it is something that is required uh, but I think it's a great um, opportunity to showcase your written and your logical reasoning skills as well because the ATAR is only one aspect of assessing your abilities and I actually found it quite comforting knowing that it wasn't all just about that mark in the end but that I was actually able to showcase my written skills and my persuasive writing skills in that essay based um, exam. So I actually sat the lap twice, I did it in year 11 and year 12 um, and the great thing is it actually does take your highest mark. So it's not necessarily your most recent mark, um, but it is the higher of the marks if you do it twice. So it's definitely comforting to know that um, it's not just all about the ATAR, but you do have the LAT as well to help with entry into the law programs here at UNSW. Perfect. Thank you. Very good explanation. Um, and finally, I guess this goes um, back to what uh, Christian, was, when who was on the stage earlier, talking about his UNSW co-op scholarship program. Um, we spoke about his industry experiences. Have either of you been exposed to industry or done any internships yet within your degree? Yeah, so I actually took a work integrated learning experience back last term. So I did this through my law program and I was at the Australian Dispute Centre. Nice. So I was able to stay, or well, stay there, I was able to work, I guess, there for a day each week um, and was able to learn some skills in the industry itself. And you can get that um, accredited towards your degree as well. So I know that all of the um, faculties have some sort of work integrated learning um, opportunity, so students can definitely take it up on that if they would like to. Perfect. Yeah. And Anna, have you been exposed to any industry in your course yet? So I haven't jumped onto an internship experience just yet, but the great thing about the Bachelor of Commerce program at UNSW is there is actually a mandatory work ex in work industry learning uh, component to the degree. So that means by the time you graduate, you're definitely going to have some internship experience that can be self-sourced or the uni can help source one for you. So it's not so much of a stress of finding that job. And it just gives you that peace of mind that by the time I'm graduating, I'm going to be very employable with the right experience. 
Perfect. That was a lovely, lovely note to finish on. Thank you so much for joining me both this evening. And thank you to our audience for joining us online. Um, that is officially the end of our UNSW 12 Info evening. I hope that you all got valuable information out of tonight and that our team was able to answer your questions. If there's anything that you're still unsure of, um, be sure to get in touch with our team. I've just got um, some contact details up on the screen there now. And really, I want to strongly encourage you to attend our UNSW Open Day, which is on Saturday the 2nd of September. Both myself, uh, Lizzie and Anna will be there. Grace um, and all of the other panel members that join me tonight will be there at the Open Day. And it really is your chance to come on campus, um, get immersive experiences and find out what it is like to study here at UNSW. On a final note, I'd love to wish you all the very best of luck um, as you finish your Year 12 studies this year. Um, we'd really love to welcome you to the UNSW campus next year in 2024. Have a lovely evening and I hope to see you on campus soon. Good night. <laughs>